All right, everybody, welcome to Tesla Today. So one big giant news came out just yesterday. Adam Jonas, who's an analyst for Morgan Stanley, came out with a new price target for Tesla, $400 per share, rising from $250. That's a $600 billion increase in market cap for Tesla. We're going to go through his report and we're going to go review all of the CNBC videos that came out attacking back at them. And we don't know why they are, but Jeff is going to share with us some of his thoughts of why this is all happening. Welcome, Jeff. Appreciate you joining me. Great to be with you. Everybody knows he's a supply chain um, expert, C-level in many Fortune 100 companies. He's also previously been a chief quality officer. He's running his own consulting firm. So if you need any help, he's the guy to go to. Always gives us great, great advice. So let's go through this at this point. So what happened this weekend was um, breaking news. Morgan Stanley's Adam Jonas, he increased his Tesla price target 60% from $250 to $400. And he upgraded his rating to overweight it's now the top pick. And the reason why he's citing this, and we'll go through the report, is that after doing a, a lot more research that they have been doing, they felt that Dojo is actually going to deliver. And there's several new ro um, revenue streams that he's much more bullish on. Robotaxi, of course, but also this new SaaS network services, which we'll go through. So this is kind of his uh, report saying it's a $400 uh, price target uh, market cap. Uh, currently is at 875. This is going to add $600 billion to this. Uh, what was your reaction when you saw this, Jeff? Yeah, I think this is a um, long time coming. A lot of the Tesla folks that really study the company have seen this uh, coming and we've been talking about it in spaces on various videos and just in, in our community. And I, I believe this is Morgan Stanley getting out in front of that NVIDIA chat GPT moment. Remember that that chat GPT moment was an NVIDIA supercomputer, NVIDIA hardware, and, and then this open AI company developing an application called chat GPT in this language based, uh, text AI model. And what you have with Tesla is Tesla is actually doing the whole thing end to end. And I think that's confusing a lot of people. And I think the 66 page report compiled by seven uh, folks at, at Morgan Stanley. Adam Jonas is touted as one of the one of the top, if not the top auto analysts on the street. I think they try to dissect this and again, get ahead of the NVIDIA chat GPT moment, or in this case, it's going to be Tesla, real world AI and video versus NVIDIA chat GPT text based AI. Okay. So after that tweet from Sawyer, Elon Musk actually replied saying almost all of Tesla's value long-term will be from AI and robots, both vehicle and humanoid. He's been repeating this quite often. I think the confidence level has gone up, especially with we've seen FSD version 12 and the new supercomputer. Uh, this con continuous uh, statement by not only Elon, but multiple uh, Tesla AI employees is that they're now compute constrained and that's why Dojo is so critical. So here's just a quick look at the actual research report that um, Morgan Stanley released and we're going to go through some of the key points. Um, so the big one here is that, you know, Tesla has been viewed as an auto company and a uh, few are starting to realize that te Tesla is actually a tech company, but it's starting to happen. And I think why this particular report is important is that you're starting to see, of course, the bulls, uh, but the financial analysts are now starting to, you know, start to recognize that Tesla is an AI company. But the catalyst down here says that Dojo is a supercomputer effort that's been, you know, in the works for the past five, uh, five years, and it's now going to be worth watching. And they compare it to AWS, to what, what happened to Amazon when they were able to get um, AWS working, which is a separate business unit, being able to do sort of a SaaS model. Um, and again, just repeating what we've already said, it's going to add up to 500 billion. That's the dojo part, but the actual complete price increase is 600 billion to the actual uh, market cap. And here, the, the last sentence was, was, was important, which is the more we looked at dojo, the more we realized the potential for underappreciated value in a stock. Like many other large cap tech stocks on your screen, we believe Tesla can reasonably test its all-time highs, $400 over the next 12 months. And so now they go through what exactly this is. Jeff, before I move forward here, um, any comments on, you know, finally being seen as an AI company? Yeah, I think this is, this is the beginning of that moment. Obviously, uh, where Wall Street is has to take notice 
And it'll be interesting to watch the coverage of it today. Cause again, you don't get, you know, in terms of more of a top tier analyst and, and you have Morgan Stanley putting out this note. So it'll be interesting to watch the coverage of it today. There's already been some coverage of it this morning, but I believe this is a critical moment because this whole time it feels like Tesla has been operating under the radar uh, in terms of being, you know, and Elon has even responded to tweets as such as that basically saying they just don't get it. And, you know, knowing his personality, reading the excerpts uh, from this upcoming biography from Walter Isaacson, he's really up to challenges like this and, and really wants to show the world uh, in terms of, you know, his, his team, his team's capability. And he really wants to, you know, take things to all new levels. Again, it all goes back to um, the mission thing and the vision statements for these companies in terms of what they're trying to do. And uh, to date, H100 hardware uh, has been a bottleneck in to get into achieving this vision. So if you've seen what Tesla has done over its history, which is go in and put their arms in hands around bottlenecks and then basically take over and commandeer them. And if you've seen that pattern, they're, they're exercising that same pattern here. This may be on the grandest scale of anything they've, they've done, but if you see what, if you've, if you've seen the history of what they've done, they have a history of doing this. Elon has a history of leading and doing this. So it makes, it makes perfect sense. And if you sat through the four hour, uh, you know, AI day, it makes perfect sense what they're, what they're doing and what they're about to do. Well, you and I are Tesla bulls. <laughs> For us, it makes total sense. For many people, it makes total sense. But as we'll show you, there's some CNBC uh, reactions to this report. And they, for them, they still see things differently. We'll look at that. The stock did rise, as we saw at, this, at the time of this recording. Um, the stock rose by $22. And we'll see where it ends up for, by the end of the day here on Monday. Uh, but you can see this uh, just jump, and this is related possibly to this report. Do you think, Jeff, that this jump is absolutely related to this, or there's other things? Yeah, I think it, it, it is this. I think there's other things going on too. First, I mean, a 10% reaction over, you know, to open. Um, this is one of the biggest stocks in the S and P. Uh, so there are people that have been short. Uh, that, you know, there's a lot of concern and again. These people that want to just count cars as like they, they, they believe that this is the, by the way, it's one of the criticisms of this report is when does this hit the EPS? And we'll talk about that. But um, the, the, there's this fascination of just wanting to count cars every 90 days. And this report just completely gets away, gets away from that and says, look, we're going to get ahead of the NVIDIA chat GPT moment. We're going to get ahead of the Amazon AWS moment that really Wall Street missed and had to and, and played catch up for years and are still playing catch up. And we're going to tell this story that Tesla actually has this complete end to end solution, whether it's the, you know, Amazon web services to the NVIDIA uh, supercomputer hardware to the software and their CUDA software they, Tesla has all, all this in house and they're developing and doing this in house. So, I mean, that, that's my reaction to this is they want to get ahead of, um, they want to get ahead of this moment. They want to be the ones to be able to, to break it and tell the story. And it'd be interesting to see yeah. how the reaction is. This line, it, it, nothing fancy here, but it just makes me wonder why people have not caught on to the fact that Tesla is an, um, an AI company and even a chip company, if you look at it. Um, so here's, you know, nice overview, which is, um, you know, the, Tesla has a significant amount of data capture more than anyone else out there because of their cars, because of just, um, you know, the, the, the videos that they're able to get. This is real world AI. They have the world's top talent, right? We know that um, Tesla and SpaceX are number one and two in terms of the, the number place that the smartest people, engineers want to go to. World's hardest compute software problem. They're solving autonomy, which is real world AI, not, not just large language model. Unlimited access to capital is very interesting because they're so profitable and they've got such a huge cash base and then the vertical integration hardware and software. So those all make it up. And then they've got exhibit two, which is you've got the auto flywheel, which is already happening today. Um, again, making so much money, being such a great uh, segment, it improves design, increased value, um, volume. And then are they able to, because of scale, which you've been teaching us a lot, Jeff, is that, you know, the higher the volume, the lower the cost because of supply chain costs go down. 
that's a flywheel. But now Morgan Stanley believes there's a SaaS flywheel that's going to happen as well. What's your uh, explanation of this, uh, yeah. this slide? This is a great chart. One of the things that's at the core of each of these wheels is, is not only just like in, in the left wheel, not, it's not only their scale that they're developing. That is now a, a very big deal. Tesla goes to any auto supplier in the world and says, I'm building the highest volume car model in the world. Do you want this business or not? And in, in so many words, they have leverage. But what's at the actual core of this wheel is how they designed their supply chain and how they designed how the car is built, the engineering of the car, the unit economics is at the core of the flywheel. Because if you have bad unit economics, look at the Chinese players. Tesla mm -hmm. makes, and we talked about this last week, there was a great chart by one of uh, the uh, folks on Twitter um, that we credited. The Tesla makes 53% of the, um, the auto profits in China. And there's a reason for that. Most of them are actually negative gross margins in their EV business. At the core of the flywheel is Tesla's unit economics design. They design a profitable solution. And then when you scale that profitable solution, it becomes that much more profitable. Same thing if you apply that to the flywheel on the right. We'll, maybe we'll talk through this, but the design of their approach to real-world AI, the design of Dojo, the chip, the, um, the, um, the network infrastructure, it's designed to be like five times smaller footprint, six times less than the current going H100 price. That These are concerted, these are higher performing, better solutions. So they've done the same thing at the core of each of these flywheels, which is focus on the core unit economics so that when you scale up the solution, it becomes massively profitable and something that you actually can get the scale. So just to explain this, I, he, what Morgan Stanley is saying is that Dojo, which is um, Tesla's own supercomputer, which has gone, um, it's already in production now, and it's got uh, potential to be 20 times the size by next year. It's going to accelerate not only Tesla's auto, but also this new business SaaS double flywheel. What the SaaS is, is software as a service. And instead of Tesla selling their chips, just like NVIDIA is, they're going to have access to their supercomputer and what they're saying here is that as companies decide to use Tesla's supercomputer, as well as their neural network and their real world AI that no one else can, and we'll explain later what real world AI is, but this then gets the data, user experience, platform, uh, affordability goes down because more people are using it. And then everything just continues to fly flywheel. So the more, this is, these are examples of companies where the, or businesses where the more users, the better. And so this is their explanation of what's happened before Dojo and what happens after they launch their own supercomputer Dojo um, and then ex and accelerate it. So first, before Dojo, we're just an automotive business. It's a, it takes about a month to speed um, the speed for training the AI. You can explain this to me. I didn't understand why the capex in Do before Dojo is high single digit billions, but then after Dojo is low single digit billions, and our us usage before Dojo was inefficient and data processing is cost. Because before Dojo, they were using NVIDIA. They will continue to use NVIDIA. They can't get their hands enough. It's just that they can't buy enough from NVIDIA. They've now got two supercomputers from NVIDIA um, and they'll probably want to buy more, but that's why they built Dojo so that they have their own solution. Uh, can you explain yeah. this to me, Jeff? Yeah, to scale to, scale to the 100 exaflops, the NVIDIA solution is, I think, five times the physical size. So think of, think of a data center, think of all the ancillary uh, capex that's needed to run a da data center the hvac a fire suppression all this all this additional stuff that's needed uh, and, as well as just the inefficiency um, of the silicon itself uh, and then take that solution and then look at what dojo promises which is about six you know about six and a half times less the cost just based on how they're baselining it today five times less the size and so therefore to deliver equivalent compute power, you, smaller size, lower cost structure, that's why you're going to take the CapEx way down. Uh, and then you're going to amortize it over a number of years. So it's a much more efficient solution, not only performance and performance efficiency and, and power efficiency and so forth, but the actual unit economics of the data center um, that they're building as well will be much more efficient. 
goes on goes along with what the the inference computer that they put in the car what's in the what's in the tesla vehicle today everything i this is what i believe the super the the inference computers um you know all the redundancy they put in the cameras any sensors i i believe it's under 1500 maybe under 1200 dollars per car and i think that's probably benchmark in the industry so tesla is taking that that's the only way they were going to able to be able to put four or five million of these you know, of these, of these um, eyes and ears on the road to gather and create all this data for these data centers to actually go process and work on. The only way we're able to do it is to get the unit economics down of the solution. And that's why everybody's going to be behind on Tesla. It's, it's a hard thing that you, like, how do you catch up uh, when they've got, you know, almost 5 million vehicles on the road gathering this data, you know, every single day. And then you just have these, these certain cities that are cordoned off and you're gathering the small data, a smaller number of vehicles. So they have the data advantage. And now they're talking about here is the compute advantage that they'll have five times, uh, le- five, one fifth the space that's needed and about six and a half times advantage on the cost to deliver, you know, the same number of exaflops as the existing, uh, H1 NVIDIA H100 solution today. <laughs> Tesla is uh, so vertically integrated. I bet as a supply chain expert, this is one of your dreams because everything is so much cheaper when you can get it directly from you yourself, as opposed to having to price it out from other vendors who then they, they do their markups. Um, so this, this explained to CapEx to me, just like you just did, which is when they do 100 exaflops using NVIDIA's A100s, which they're going to con- continue doing, uh, this is their cost you know, let's say $8 billion. But if they use their own dojo, they can reduce that cost by uh, six, the six times in performance improvements imply multi-billion dollar cost savings from using their own dojo supercomputer in addition to this A100. And that's where the CapEx reduction could be. You just explained that. And so when we look at the price target of $400 from previously 250, so this is the old price target of 250, but within 12 months, you know, the auto will bring up $7. Um, surprisingly, they put very little in energy and insurance is just too small for their minds. But it's mobility, which is uh, robotaxi. So $70, which is the, the $70 plus this $59 for the network services, which is the SaaS that we just talked about. The two together is makes up the vast majority and then a little bit more for battery business. And that's how they got their $400. Uh, what's your thought about the price target? Yeah, I, I don't know if I I mean I, if I agree with all of these um like like where's where's the supercharger business um really val- valuing energy at at zero I think is um is going to I think we're going to look back in a couple of years and that's going to be misguided. Um so I actually think that there's a lot more room to run and I think on the auto business um you you can yeah if you if you the way that they're doing this is like, look, you can't just look at Tesla as one business as a car company. And, and that's correct. Uh, but just relative to where Tesla is today, that the model Y is going to be, is the number one selling car. It's going to continue to grow in volume and probably the model three refresh is going to challenge it. And then you have Tesla entering this brand new category with the truck. And I mean, and, and then just you, you continued global expansion in terms of getting into geographies today that don't have EV adoption, what's Tesla going to be there first with? They're going to put the supercharger network in before anybody. And that's how they're, that's how they, they pull people in. And then they open it, by the way, they open it up so that others can use it. So I just think the the supercharger business, the energy business, and even the auto business probably still have a lot more room to run than, than Morgan's. And maybe that's part of the reason why he's got a, a bull case uh, to, to five fifty over the 400. Uh, but again, a number of these things have to play out over a number of years. That price target, I think is a six to 12 month price target. And, you know, Dojo as a, as a service, all these things are going to take a couple of years to play out. But the thing with, with Wall Street and with, with Mr. Market is you have to be in there before everybody sees it and realizes it. Uh, again, this is an investment advice for everyone. Everybody should kind of analyze this themselves, make their own decision. But you know, there's near term and then there's, you know, more medium term. I, I call 24 months still kind of medium term. Um, 
And, you know, I think they're going to realize a lot of this much quicker than, than people think. <laughs> Just wanted to show that I'm smiling because <laughs> I was <laughs> smiling when you were talking. That's all. Just wanted to show the smile. All right. So, you know, this is the stretching your thinking part. This is where they're saying that, you know, t Tesla with what they're doing with autonomy is really a leader in real world AI. And so what is real world AI and what could it mean for Tesla's business in the future? And they're saying that, you know, because of vehicle autonomy, they're taking in all these videos and the, the, the single network of version 12 is able to kind of just figure things out on its own by visual data, looking at what the world's doing, deciding what to do and mimicking what the human would do. This could apply to many other businesses and long-term it can extend beyond the auto industry uh, because it can process visual data, which can lay the foundation for vision-based AI models. It can be used for robotics, healthcare, security. Um, you know, as Tesla makes headway autonomy and software, third-party dojo services can offer investors the next leg of Tesla's growth story. So, you know, in their chart here, they think that you can sell do dojo as a service because of the visual AI capability, which we don't think anyone else is working on. Uh, not only auto automobiles, but manufacturing, aviation, power, it's basically everything, robotics, security cameras. And so this is the ability that just by taking the video in, you can do kind of like understanding what's happening and then taking actions out, whether it's robots and the robots learning what to do. Um, yeah, I mean, here's one example they gave was, you know, when the car is driving and then you tell it to go to the Starbucks, it'll recognize where the Starbucks is and it'll know where to park because of what, what others have done who have been in that space and they know where to go. And because they recognize the location really well, uh, visually, not just, you know, through maps. Uh, what's your expectation about all this, Jeff? Well, what I like about this is this isn't, um, we're not watching a science fiction novel being written here. Uh, Elon and his director of AI jumped, jumped in a production Tesla Model S that you could buy. Anybody could have bought, like it was, I think it was all, like a car from last year and ran the V12 software doing exactly what you described, Herbert. Yeah, this is an alpha software. This is even ready for release. And it was doing entire drives, doing exactly what you described. So, you know, this thing is getting, this thing is getting tested, put through the ringer. There's more training happening in the background. And this thing's going to be out in a couple of months. But in terms of this graphic you put up, I mean, Tesla is, has this expertise in auto and they they put it on display. And if you think the other auto manufacturers who are basically nowhere in this, in terms of scalability, haven't noticed this and would potentially want to partner versus die, uh, they're going to choose a partnership and, and look, Tesla has shown from a procurement perspective to actually be a very good actor. Look at what they're doing on the supercharger side, they're not, they're, you know, openly saying that like, well, we're not turning this into some major boon and, you know, from a profit, they will be profitable with the increased utilization, but they're not going to do it at the expense of just like, you know, you know, basically taking other competitors down. Uh, they're, they're actually, it's a fair offering. They've shown that. So now, now take that. Now Tesla's shown to be a good actor. They've open sourced their patents open, open the supercharger network. I think people are going to be very open to want to work with them on their, uh, on their solution. It looks like they've got a whole development kit that they're preparing in the background. What's a development kit? Development kit is what are the software? What are the tools? What are the hardware you need to put? And what are the sensors you need to equip and put in your vehicles so that you can run this own version on your own cars? And I believe Tesla is working on this in the background. So they're going to start in your graphic. They're going to I think the, 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 the center or the core is going to be auto and they're in, in the background in parallel, they're working on this, their own robotic solution, which I think they're going to ramp up fairly quickly internally and get it vetted and working internally, but that's going to be a couple of years in the making, but I think an auto and robot humanoid robots, um, they're going to have this service running for Tesla you massively improving the unit economics and financials of Tesla and the safety of, of people that use Tesla products. And then they're going to have the robots running for, you know, in their own facility, their own factories. Uh, again, this will 
happen over a period of time. And then if people see this, they're going to want to adopt and license this and have this for themselves. And so when you think of, you think of Amazon web services, you think it's everywhere. So this is now we're getting to the network side of it. You know, Tesla is going to have this, this AI training capability, but kind of, instead of this being this, this cloud analytics thing with, with, you know, where Amazon web services is, they're going to have this AI supercomputer training capability, supercomputer, you know, data network that, that will be offered for others to use. Um, so I think, again, I think it starts with them at the core, but it's quickly going to branch out. And I think you're going to see an announcement in the near future on the auto side where someone, you know, some one, maybe more are going to want to partner with Tesla on this. And I think putting this dojo, putting this, this whole thing out on display is now showing the other side of this to these potential partners of like, wow, it's just, it's not just this inference computer that's running in the car with some hobbled together you know, Tesla solution in the background. It's something that Tesla is really trying to scale. Yeah. I mean, Dojo being used for the car is already big enough that um, it, they can sell that information or that knowledge of real world AI. But if you combine it to all these other industries, it's even if you compete with somebody else who's doing just autonomy, you're going to be much bigger. Let's compare now um, how Dojo compares to the current GPU alternative, which is NVIDIA. So, Using Dojo instead of NVIDIA, they're going to use everything that they can get their hands on. So they still have two NVIDIA supercomputers. But now that Dojo is online, it's going to reduce the training time from one month now to less than a week. The occupancy network speed is now 4.4 times faster. The auto labeling speed is three times faster. These are the two things that are being used in autonomy. The internal cost savings is six times cost savings, which we've already covered. Smaller footprint, five times smaller the performance is four times greater and the performance per while is 1.3 times greater. So I did not realize that Dojo had all of these additional benefits other than just performance is faster. And if you compare Tesla's uh, Dojo versus the chip versus Nvidia's chip, because they are using the 8100s and now they also added on a brand new supercomputer, the H100, which is so much bigger and faster, uh, so much faster um, in many ways to the A100s. So NVIDIA did that. And then Tesla re re uh, introduced their new H100 supercomputer just uh, a couple weeks ago. But you can see the size here. This is one training tile. It, it requires six of these A100 boxes. And if you look at the uh, the, t the Dojo supercomputer, this is what it looks like the exo for one exopod. This is what it looks like for the, the two A100s or the H100s. So a uh, much, much larger footprint required five times. And so what they're saying is that Tesla predicts that they'll reach 100 exaflops to compete by Q4 next year. That's 4.5 times what it is today. And Tesla today is already the fourth largest supercomputer. So people don't realize that Tesla is a massive player. And look at this, look at this quote here. The you know the Nvidia, which we all know is the leader in chips. Everybody's clamoring to buy them. Their stock just could, you know just ridiculously jumped, and they deserve it because of sales. They're going to ship 200, 200, 250,000 H100 chips this year, but Dojo is going to be able to reach forty to fifty thousand chips. Also, they're not a small player, Tesla. So in terms of supercomputers, the Tesla supercomputer is fourth. You can see here that Meta is number one. Then you've got this uh, national. Um, nationalized, uh, you know, supercomputer, a country, and then you've got uh, Tesla number four. So the time is now. Dojo will be phased into the current supercomputer system. And as of July, which is a couple a month ago, two months ago, the first Exopod has been scaled into production. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, like, I mean, I'm not a big fan of looking at one day results in the market, but I mean, the the NASDAQ's up a percent. Um the S and P is up, um, you know, half percent in, in, in videos who would normally be, um, you know, a huge part of that. They're down a percent and Tesla's up 10%. So the market is reacting to this, you know, again, Nvidia is a great company. I think they're going to do great. Uh, but I mean, there is, I think the market is connecting these two things together. I think it helps that quite frankly, Adam Jonas put in the graphics, the video, uh, the pictures actually showing like, this is what these tiles, this is what this data center actually looks like. They're building something that's actual real. And I mean, the, the market is, is, is reacting to it. 
Um, I think there's other things that are happening as well, but we can talk about that in a bit. Um, but there's definitely, there's definitely a market reaction to this. And again, there's room, as Elon said, there's room for multiple players here, by the way, Tesla and Nvidia have a, have a good relationship from everything I'm hearing. Right. They have a very good and positive relationship and that should continue because there's just, there's going to be a lot of room for this, but they're, they're kind of working on not working on, there's two separate things happening. There's this real world AI video training, which is going to be used for computers on wheels and computers on legs. And then there's this chat GPT text based language model thing that is going with Microsoft is, you know, uh, Facebook's got their own product that they're working on. Several other players have their own product. Google uh, and others have their own products and they're working on. And it just Tesla's going after something that's a little bit more in the physical world. And they can both coexist and they can both ramp up and both have, there's, there's, I think there's plenty of room for all this, but I think Tesla needs to be recognized in that category and in that discussion of AI players. And the, the graphic you just put up shows they're, they're, they're going to have, 25% of Nvidia's production up and going on their dojo, you know, by the end of this year, they can, putting the two production numbers side by side shows the magnitude that this is real. Like this is actually happening. Hey there. Thank you for joining me. If you can, please consider supporting this channel so I can keep it going. It's a lot of work arranging all these amazing interviews. One of the easiest ways is just to click that join button and become a member of the channel. Thank you very much. And let's get brighter. Yeah, to reiterate the point you just made, we're not, I, no one's saying that uh, Tesla is competing against NVIDIA. In fact, they're really good partners. They're going to buy as much NVIDIA chips, but that just trying to show that Tesla's not just a car company. They are an AI company. They are a chip company. They are a co technology company. How can you, you know, neglect looking at this? Take a look at the, um, the, the people that work at the Dojo team. 12 people, Jeff, 12 people, that's it. But between them, they're the best of the best. As you know, Tesla can get the best people, 250 years of relevant hardware and software experience. Seven people came from AMD, one person from IBM, two people from Apple, one person from Samsung, NVIDIA, and digital. That just, just shows how, um, how incredible these, these people are. Okay, so just a quick uh, summary, Jeff, before we get to market reaction, the CNBC folks and how they reacted to all this, what is your um, kind of overview of what you saw from Jim, from Morgan Stanley's Adam Jonas? Yeah, I Tesla should, you know, should be put and is now put in the same conversation for AI as Nvidia, you know, Microsoft, what have you. And this 66-page report written by seven people again a highly respected um you know it was an auto analyst that wrote this but it's really an, an ai discussion uh about an auto company that is now branching out in more than an auto company and there's graphics there's pictures there's real data in this uh again none of this is is guaranteed to happen you know tesla has to execute but the the reality is is they're up in training right now they're in Dojo is in production as of July. And I believe that this report was kicked off a number of months ago, knowing that this is, this is coming to fruition and, and Morgan Stanley and wanted to get ahead of this and wanted to be the ones to break this, um, you know, to the marketplace. So Tesla's in this conversation and, you know, and he showed the graphic at the end, just like showing the experience. There's more than 12 people. I think those are 12 of the notable people um but they, they have some of the best talent in the world and remember they're designing silicon they design the inference computer the surrounding printed circuit board everything that's running in five million teslas today is designed by this team and this team is now is now do, doing the d1 silicon for the actual supercomputer network infrastructure side of it so Tesla designs silicon. They design the software that runs on the silicon. They go out, they're fabulous, just like NVIDIA, and they go out and source and have the silicon produced by a TSMC or a Samsung or maybe a Global Foundries and if you, whomever, but they go out and they get it fabbed and now they're using it in their own shop along, again, alongside the NVIDIA product. So 
this is a, a, a huge moment, I think, for the company, not just because a report was written. It's just more of a realization. Uh, I think the huge moment uh, occurred when, as Tesla has revealed these details over the last couple of months and the community has seen it. All right. So we've just uh, reviewed Adam Jonas's Morgan Stanley report where he showed that Dojo is a, a you know, real potential, not only for autonomy, but also for SaaS revenue for Tesla. And that's going to be have tremendous potential to be applied to multiple industries. And uh, it, it just bumps up Tesla's lead as a supercomputer from fourth largest by the end of this year. It'll be 20 times larger than that. That's unbelievable. So we know that Tesla is an AI company. That's us Tesla bulls. Let's go take a look at many of these videos from CNBC of how they reacted when they saw this. So Jeff is with me and um, he tweeted this out um, and he said that compared, you know, how CNBC, uh, their take on the UAW strike that the big automakers are going through right now versus the price target on Tesla that Morgan Stanley just showed that Tesla's an AI company, you'll be shocked. And maybe you won't be shocked, but they are actually thinking that um, the massive shutdown of the US big three auto, nothing, not a big deal. And then they get very upset (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that Morgan Stanley gave Tesla a price target and they they have their own views of it, which we'll go through. No due diligence with Tesla themselves. I mean, I think you're being very fair there. But then you do say that maybe they're serving their ad by masters, masters Ford, GM, and Tesla, uh, Ford and GM. So if you take a look and at Stellantis, the ads yeah. here, as Stellantis, here's Stellantis. Uh, if you look at how much ad spend that they do on CNBC, Great, great find here, Jeff. A hundred million dollars. <laughs> uh, finish the sentence. This makes Stella Stellantis what? Yeah, this is, this is Stellantis. It was cut off, but yeah, I was looking up Stellantis data because I have the Ford data, have the General Motors data, and it and it showed some of the other data. And this is from Statistica. Um, there's other sources as well. It's it's not easy to find ad spend because it's not. Yeah, uh, publicized all the time, and some some of it's estimated, but this is in the ballpark, and I've seen a couple other sources, and it just shows that, um, that you know, this, there's real money that's going from these companies to CNBC, NBC, Universal. So yeah. why wouldn't CNBC, NBC? Well, first off, why would they want to run overly negative stories about Ford, GM, Salantis? They wouldn't. And so what you'll see in this video is them kind of saying, look, like this, this strike thing is probably not going to be a big deal. And, and that's what you would want to do. If somebody's paying you a half a billion dollars between those three automakers a year, that's probably how you'd want to get on air and, and say it. Um, and then when you're Tesla and you give them nothing, um, you know, it, it's, you know, and, and Tesla is going squarely up against these companies and their existence is at stake, you get some of the video responses we'll see now. Do not get, there's a lot of people who just think it really killed GDP growth. I mean, this is 108,000 people. We don't know whether they're going to strike all three. They don't have enough money to go more than five weeks, of, even if they do a $600 payout per week. So I'm just not saying the strikes to be that important. I think that they're more likely to, if they're going to pick one of these, Stellantis. So I, I, I just think it's not a big focus. I do think there's a red hot CP. Okay. So he doesn't think that <laughs> the union strike is a big deal for the three auto folks. Okay. Yeah. And just comp- play, if you play the other video and just look at the change in the face and demeanor, these are just a few minutes apart in the same show, by the way. Yes, he has always been. There were any number of his reports I can remember that have uh, very exciting titles. I, I, yes. Yes. I mean, honestly, I mean, do you think the, do you think the giants are that bad? I mean, this is like a one hit thing. What, wait, what's the one hit thing though, Jim? I mean, that just, he was it, against the stock for the He's been fighting this stock. So suddenly, no, he doesn't have to fight anymore. You know why? Because he's been fighting it as a car company. Oh, but as a tech company. You know what? I'm Jensen Wong is sitting there saying, you know what? This guy is taking my chips because he doesn't have enough of his chips. He's creating brains. And now he's. Look, the that? guy's a showman. Okay, Jeff. <clears throat> so what'd you think about that clip? He's angry. Yeah, for. Yeah, he's angry, and we have a couple other clips where the face really changes. They're um, they're basically they're basically saying that it's there's corruption, you know, going on here with with uh, a 66 page report with data, facts, numbers, graphs. They they, they you know, and, and just versus like, hey, let's send a couple of reporters in, let's try to understand the Tesla AI effort better ourselves. 
I mean, this thing is going to be this big. I mean, they send crews of people out to Meta. They send crews of people out to Microsoft and to Apple. And I don't know, maybe there's something going on in the Tesla side as well. Um, but I, I think Tesla would be pretty open to telling, you know, the AI story that they want to share. They do it. I mean, there's a four hour video up on YouTube of their AI day where they really go through this in detail. So, I mean, the information is out there that shows that this is real and it shows that this is something that could, and what you want analysts to do is you want them to get out ahead of things versus them actually happening and hitting you in the forehead saying, wow, I wish I would have bought that um, a year or two ago. So that's what analysts are supposed to do. But here, this looks, this looks like, again, it's a very kind of vitriolic reaction. And we've got some more clips as well. Yeah, we're going to look at these next clips. Um, it's uh, like you say, uh, they really are angry. This is it may be more than just the ads, Jeff. There's something else here. But uh, let's take a look at what you said here which is uh, the CNBC on-air personalities, the producers, they look ridiculous claiming the Morgan Stanley research is corrupt and there's nothing to look at in terms of Tesla's AI efforts than practice onanism. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> is it look, when another yeah, look company it up. Yeah, cart uh, makes a cartoon of them claiming it's AI. So let's let's take a look at that. Um, I'm sorry about this, guys. Uh, so Meta is an advertiser. So let's take a look at this uh, this clip of them saying this. I, th yeah. I like the hostess Twinkie call more frank. I, I hear you. And listen, it's a, it's a fair point Jim makes, certainly, that the guy had a $250 price target. So obviously right. below the current stock price and suddenly oh. has reversed. He's been equal weight for a very long yes. time. And there is a large disclaimer in the note that uh, Morgan Stanley does and seeks to do business with companies related to Tesla. Uh, it may uh, alter or imply a conflict of interest in Morgan's Well, I'll tell you the one only thing, thing that was true do, about that note is he's not corrupt. Okay? They, he's not corrupt. I'll tell you one thing true. Morgan Stanley would love to do is get out of that $13 billion. It did. It doesn't have it. didn't take it all down. <laughs> then it financed the Twitter deal. Any bids? Jim, what do you want to bid on that? Because they'll, they'll listen. I don't know. Oh, my God. They, they're just anger. All three of them? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they're connecting it to the Twitter deal. Uh, again, they're not focused on what's in the report. What does it mean today? What does it mean for the future, um, they're, 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 they're literally just focused on all like conspiracy theories and you don't want, I mean, again, there's, there's opinion people on that desk and then there's reporters on that desk. There's two reporters and an opinion person and they're, you know, they're all very experienced people and you, you'd really just, again, you'd want to hear the news. Then you'd want to hear, you know, their opinion, if that's their opinion and that's their take, then, okay, that's their opinion and that's their take. I think Tesla is going to prove them wrong. Uh, and there's a lot of data that says they're already wrong. Um, but I'm just su surprised to see that um, that would be their reaction to, um, you know, literally one of the top seven companies in the world and the greatest allocator of capital in the world and what Tesla has already been able to do and prove. I'm surprised that that would be the, the reaction. And what I tried to, and there's another video right after this of like, so that's their reaction to Tesla AI. That's what they think of Tesla AI. It's not there. It's corrupt. It's, <laughs> but then I, we show this video right. of them with Meta, and it was just, you can play it. It's comical. Yeah, well, we have. We'll See, always, that's my AI. We'll always have that video AI of the two of you, of you and um, and Zuckerberg missing your high five because he couldn't figure that out. It's great, it's a great moment. You have to scrape the bottom of the barrel for some days about me. Oh, here we are. Yeah. So that, yeah. So they, they love, him. so, so, so Meta did a whole buildup and of the CNBC squawk on the street show made, made metaverse characters of all of them. And that excited them. That, that is certainly excited Jim Cramer. And, th and that's, they believe that that AI is real, that, that AI. And, and again, I'm not taking anything away from Meta and what they're doing. But it's just almost comical the 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 lack yeah. of depth in, involved. And if you go to the the graphic I put up or the or the the small cutout of text, I mean, this is data. Um, is Meta spent over a hundred million dollars in advertising last year with CNBC? So do you think CNBC would run that scene? Like, if if Morgan Stanley did an upgrade of Meta, 
do you think they would have run that same piece and said it's you know it's 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 a it's uh it's corrupt it's you know it's connected to another deal no they would have been you know touting how great everything is so i think the just connecting the the advertising spend to like how there's coverage it just shows you that there's there needs to be an alternative uh in the world where you can actually get just you know you can hear all sides of an issue and and you can hear the facts all right Okay. Well, you know, we know that Tesla is dominating in the auto industry. Electric vehicles is here. Despite the war that we're having with the multi the mainstream media, the the, the big oil, the big auto, um, Tesla succeeded. And every car that's going to be sold is no doubt now at this point going to be an electric vehicle. The next challenge is convincing investors that Tesla's an AI company. Morgan Stanley did a fantastic report showing, you know, their view of the advancements in Dojo. We just showed that fourth largest supercomputer will become 20 times larger within the next year. We just showed that they're going to have 50,000 Dojo chips, which is one fourth of what NVIDIA is doing, that this real world AI can apply not just to, <laughs> to cars, autonomy, it's going to apply to bots and maybe multiple industries, industries and their SaaS business could be massive. And so it's inevitable that at some point the general investor will catch on. Like you said earlier, you know, you want to get ahead of the wave, not behind the wave. And yet we are fighting mainstream media like CNBC who play favorites. And it's very clear what you just pointed out today is like, this is how they treat meta AI when they talk about their AI efforts and their anger that they have with Tesla and Elon. I think it goes beyond advertising, Jeff, because the anger is just so it's just so the vitriol is you can see in their face you can see in their voice it's not it's way more than just oh, i don't think they're a good company there's there's something else going on here um so yeah and rather and rather not i yeah i'd rather us not i rather i like how we 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 opened the show we really we talked about the data we talked about what we talked about the like the root of 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 this good news and we talked about the information I'd rather not have to talk about the media coverage, but it's part of the reality yeah. uh, of where we are today. And I'm, I'm glad we, we covered it and we'll continue to, we should continue to call it out, but we should also continue to kind of, you know, in the community, just be focused on data and facts. And if there's, if there's FUD, we should, we should address it. But I think as Tesla bulls just continue to work together, it, bulls or not, just be objective um, on it and, and, and stick to the facts and data. And I think we'll all be, you know, better off fantastic well let's let's end with a good note which is the uh cyber truck we know the cyber truck is coming uh some sort of delivery event may happen this month may happen next month but it's uh, just so many uh information and news sightings of the truck everywhere here's another bit of news that came out uh, this morning the giga press supplier idra posted a photo what looks like to be the nine thousand ton cyber truck giga press uh beautiful beautiful photo let's see <laughs> That is massive, Jeff. This is a massive, this is a machine. Look at this. It pumps out cyber trucks. Uh, and so then you replied saying that uh, Tesla pundits, everyone can do it. <laughs> yeah, sure. See you in five years. Metallurgy research and development, system design, press design, die design, fab test, iterate, replicate, ramp. You, Jeff, you've got tremendous experience with this. You've done this before. You've manufactured, you know, hardware software you've you know been the chief quality officer <clears throat> you've figured out the supply chain of how to build it yeah so you know this is not something that you know anybody can buy the idra press but it's going to take them many many years uh, to even catch up correct well that well <laughs> i've worked with this come i've worked in this developed this whole thing again miniaturized you know for the smartphone and and how and how that metal chassis is made what when i saw that picture i mean it, it's stunning uh, cause I've been through this whole flywheel from beginning to end when, you know, when the original design of smartphones were maybe like, we have to put a met, we have to put a metal chassis. We have to have a mid frame to support this large screen, this large structure and this larger battery that's in the device. And now you look at the scale of what they're doing here with Idra and I want people to know, like, you just don't walk into them and say, Hey, I need a press. It needs to be this big. Cause I'm making a car that's this big. No, this starts with 
the metallurgy engineers, the best in the business, the, the people that work on SpaceX rockets and work on Tesla cars, um, developed uh, proprietary uh, metallurgy that's that's going in these presses. Like you just can't take everything off the shelf and like think it's going to work. So this whole that's why I talk about system design. This whole thing was was started from the core minerals at the atom level, all the way to um, this finished part, which was what we're going to see in the Cybertruck and the castings that we're seeing now in other Tesla vehicles where they're massively simplifying the construction of vehicles. And the takeaway is, is this is a very long process. It needs very specialized talent that does not exist everywhere. I would venture to guess that many or most of the auto companies don't even have some of this talent. They go to the supply base and say, what's the latest metal? I'm looking for this strength. I'm looking for, um, you know, for this hardness, I'm looking for this rigid. And then they go have that conversation. They get kind of the best that they have. Tesla comes in and says, here's what our scientists have come up with. Let's figure out how to build this. Let's design the press. The press needs to be you know, maybe the biggest you ever built ever. And let's figure out how to put that solution together. I'm telling you that this started five or six years ago. And, uh, and they've been on a journey together. So you're not going to copy this very quickly. Is, can it be done eventually by others? Can castings be done? Yes. But on the scale and size of what Tesla is doing, they have a men multiple year advantage, I believe. All right, Jeff, thank you very much. So we reviewed Morgan Stanley's report. Really appreciated your commentary <clears throat> and uh, giving me feedback in terms of uh, how to look at this. And it's quite exciting. I think we generally agree with it. We really shouldn't have spent too much time on the uh, the videos, but it is fun to watch how these, uh, these CNBC people, how they reacted to this. But uh, there's probably lots more articles and more um, kind of uh, accept acceptance about Tesla as an AI company. It's it's like what's the word? You know, it's um you you can't deny it. It's undeniable yeah. at this point. So they can't really keep this charade on too long. Yeah. Thank you, Jeff. That was fun. Take care. Appreciate you.